Hi, Chris from Tech Tablets here with a review of the Peepo X9. Now this is the successor to the Peepo X8, which was a smaller model with the same look and the same build to it. It's a hybrid mini PC with a tablet screen in it, basically. Now the older model had a 7 inch screen. This now has a 1920 by 1200 8.9 inch screen in there with a 16 by 10 ratio. It has the same chipset as the older model, which is the Atom. Z3736 that can clock up to 2.1 gigahertz. Overall the build is very good just like the older model. It's quite solid, quite well put together. Uh, there's no build issues that I can see on it. There's no the tablet screens not coming up. Um, I call it a tablet but it's really a mini PC but it can really be used as a tablet but there's no battery inside of it. You can pick it up and the screen will auto rotate as well which I will show you. Uh, so we've had a look at the ports here. On the right hand side we have a power on port, volume up and down port, plastic buttons there, and a status LED here. For once it's on you can see that uh, that will light up and if it's in standby that will also flash. Two USB 2 ports here, a 3.5mm headphone jack there, speaker on the side. Now those speakers I've heard they've got a bit of static in Android but not so much in Windows. They don't make this hissing noise but in Android they do. So around the back here, what I think is a microphone, micro SD card slot, another two USB 2 ports here. Now these ports you can power yourself an external one terabyte or two terabyte hard drive. It's got sufficient power there to supply power to those drives and you can connect up two of them. I've connected up two and had no issues there. They both run very well there. So good for your media connection because there is only 32 gigabytes of storage on this particular version that I have. So we have a full size HDMI. LAN port here, so RJ45 connector, only 100 megabits per second speeds there, so not a gigabit port, and then we have the DC 12 volts in power point there. So there is a vent on the top here. There is no fan in this unit, it's completely fan, fanless. It has a passive heatsink, which is basically the whole base of this is one large heatsink for that chipset, which is right under this, right here. And if I have a look like that, you can see this grey along here, white or grey, that's a huge thermal pad that they've used. So it's transferring the heat away from the chipset and onto the back here. So it's a huge heatsink really. And there's the larger size here from the Peepo X8 here should mean that this should run a little cooler here. So I will check out the thermals on this video and look and see what kind of temperatures it gets up to and will it actually thermal throttle too. So it has four rubber pads there on the bottom, a nice sturdy base, and just looking around here, so there's just the one speaker there on the left hand side, and on the front there's nothing, we have a Peepo logo of course, and the captive Windows Home button that also works in Android. And a rather large antenna here. So if you were going to be putting this little mini PC into a TV cabinet or something, running that through your TV to run your media connection, I will just show you the clearance you have. So you need just around about seven centimeters there clearance and for the aerial the antenna is actually very large. So if I put that into the upright position here you can see you're probably going to need actually I think it's about 21 centimeters but I'll just measure that. So yeah around about 21 centimeters if you are going to use the antenna there in the fully extended position of course you can just put it either side there if you were squeezing it into a cabinet. Now the good thing about the mini PC having a tablet screen on it basically, the touch screen is, you don't need a mouse to run maybe some of your favorite movies or something, you can just power it on and then select the movies you want to play on your TV without having to connect up your mouse and keyboard which is really quite handy. So I'm just going to plug it in now and I'll show you the dual boot menu. And just plugging it in it will automatically power itself up. I just plug that in, it should now, <clears throat> excuse me, it should now power up. And here we have the dual boot menu here. Very familiar menu for those that have dual boot tablets. It's basically the same setup here. And inside BIOS, it's the, the, the name of the BIOS that they use. The brand inside BIOS setup. And uh, we can select here just Windows 10 we have, and then Android 4.4.4. And simply just press the arrow here, we'll start and we'll get into Android and I'll have a look and walk you through the Android ROM here and run a few benchmarks and games. So here's a look now here at the Android ROM. You can see that uh, there were no bloat apps installed unless you consider Keep 
Play Music, Play Movies, and a few of the other Google apps on there as Bloat or not. But it's very light, Ron, which is really good to see. It doesn't have a laggy non-stock launcher on there. It's completely stock launcher, stock Android experience, which is really good to see. I wish everyone would do that, unlike some of the other developers there, like TechLast, that decide to put their own heavy, bloaty launchers on there. So it's running Android 4.4.4. And unfortunately not Android 5. Hopefully they're going to be releasing Android 5 versions or Android 6 even would be great to see. But I'm hoping in the future that people will start to release these with Android 5 ROMs already on there. We just have to wait and see if they're going to do that or not. So overall the ROM experience is really good. Very smooth. There is no lag whatsoever. I haven't encountered any lag. And as I'll show you shortly, gaming performance is very good as well on it. Now just to show you the benchmarks that I ran on here. So first up, I tried iStorm Extreme here. There's the score. Almost 8,000 points there, which isn't bad for an Atom Z3736F here. Now, this tablet has 2 gigabytes of RAM on board, and the turbo of the CPU here can go up to 2.16. Here's the Geekbench 3 score here, so almost 900 points. Again, quite a good score for the type of chipset we have here. It's only a quad core as well to note that. So Antutu 2 benchmark 5.7.1, 34,000. Again, that's about the same as what I've seen on this chipset on tablets and other mini PCs. Bear in mind here that it is also running this resolution. So 1920 by 1200, that's gonna affect the 3D graphics score a little. And here's the GPU bench score, almost 24,000, and an average of 72 frames per second there. That's the benchmarks there that I quickly ran. Now I'm going to test out here a couple of clips. First up is a 1080p MKV file. Now I'm not sure it's going to be able to play the audio codec of this one, at least the MKV player. So let's test it and see how that runs. So it runs a 1080p MKV just fine there. I'm going to step things up a little bit and test out a 2K clip now. This is the Gravity Trader. So even 2K runs there without any stutters. To stress it out even more, a 4K clip here that I recorded on my Galaxy Note 4. And even 4K there runs just fine without any problems. Now storage is an issue within Android because they don't give you a lot of space. They've only partitioned about four gigabytes of usable space here, which really isn't enough. When you start installing some large games, as I found out quite quickly, if you install two or three large games, that's pushing it really. You might only get away with two. Like large games like Mortal Kombat or Real Racing, they take up about a gigabyte each. And before you know it, you do run into space issues. So you probably want to consider looking at the 64 gigabyte version, which should give you a lot more space there. You get just 4.119, I think, gigabytes. So 4.1, I think, is around about the space at the moment with a couple of applications, larger what games installed. I've only just got 500 megabytes free, and really that's not enough. You can, of course, run your media collection from an external hard drive. Before I test out some games, I'm just going to jump into Chrome here and show you the performance here. So scrolling here with my finger on the screen, that is relatively smooth. 
and quick there the tech tablets website is a little heavy with a lot of images overall performance is really good now I found the wireless performance to be quite good no problems there I haven't had any issues that super huge antenna is probably definitely helping with the signal there because it's massive and I don't see it should have a really good range seems to work with downstairs as well unfortunately there's no battery within the tablet so I can't just take it from my office and walk downstairs with it and plug it into the TV would be nice if they put just a tiny little battery on there that you could just keep it alive maybe for 20 minutes or so maximum but never mind so let's have a look at some games here now just close things down and get on to a little bit of gaming the fun part So here's a look at Modern Combat 5. Now this is one of the most demanding games on Android that there is, and even in Windows 10 actually this game is quite demanding too. So see how this runs. Frame rate seems to be quite fluid here. I'd say it's keeping around 30s or so. It's very hard to tell because we don't have a way of measuring the actual frame rate, unlike Windows. Now I'm just playing this with the actual touch screen here because I couldn't get my Xbox 360 controller to work. The game detects the controller but it wouldn't actually let me control things. I mean, overall, with all the action going on, it seems quite playable here. It's not doing too bad. If I look around like that, it's a little bit of lag. Now there might, way, there might be a way to get the 360 controller to work or another Bluetooth controller or another USB controller if you install drivers maybe I'm just lacking some sort of drivers for the Xbox 360 controller but I do know that Windows does support it so you can just plug it in and it works straight now away. A quick look here at Real Racing 3. I'm going to use the screen and the actual mini PC itself to control the car. So you can see it's running this game very fluid, no problems whatsoever. And it still looks quite good this game. They keep updating it and still probably one of the best games on Android so do check it out if you haven't actually played this game ever before. And now here's a look at Mortal Kombat X which is probably one of the better looking games on Android at the moment running on the Unreal Engine. And that game screen here, so the home button there does work even in Android with the Windows logo there, it's going to work just fine. And the screen does auto rotate, it does have a orientation sensor there that allows you to even play games that support it. So, games like Real Racing 3, you can use a little bit awkward because you've got the cable, you have no battery with inside this, so disconnecting that is going to completely power off the unit straight away. But you can play games if you wanted to that use the orientation sensor without any issues there. So for all, full brightness of the screen isn't too bad at all. A little bit of reflection there being a tablet screen basically that's in this mini PC. And the sharpness of the screen is really good. You can't see any individual pixels there. Now I just wanted to point out there is a bit of static that's coming through on the speaker. And I'll just put the mic right up to that so you can hear that.
Hopefully you heard that there, that there is some static coming through. That's only happening here in Android. When I switch over to Windows, I don't get that problem at all. So something in, in the ROM or something to do with Android is in, interfering with those left and right loudspeakers there, causing them to have that hiss, which isn't good to hear at all there. So here is the on-screen keyboard that does allow us to type in things, of course, just like a tablet. So we don't need to connect up a keyboard all the time or a mouse. So I can just type in here, oh, oops, Mortal Kombat that I want to download and test out and I can do all of this without any problems there without needing a keyboard which is quite handy there you can do the same in Windows so you don't need to always have that con keyboard connector. It's one of the handy things because you couldn't do this on just a standard mini Atom mini PC that doesn't of course have a screen on it so it's one of the advantages of having this hybrid unit. I forgot to show you within the Android ROM here is if you hold down the power button you can of course reboot and go through the dual boot menu and then boot over to Windows. But the easiest way to do that is just to swipe down from the top here and you have this handy little icon there. I always switch, push that and it will now just reboot itself over into Windows. So just in Windows here now having a look at the eMMC speed and you can see here the benchmark is just finishing up. This is Crystal Disk Mark and those speeds here are excellent for an eMMC drive that this Samsung is just flying because that write rate of 122 now that is five passes of one gigabyte of data that's the average there that they got not bad at all quite a good speed there considering if you look at the surface 3 tablet it gets a right speed of maybe about 60 and even lower sometimes about 40 49 so that is definitely quite a quick drive they have used the same as the Pipo X8 that I tested earlier now I haven't actually gone and installed any games or benchmarks just yet just to show you here the amount of free space we do have within Windows. So if I click over here to look at the PC, so we only have 12.8. So not a lot of space to play with. Again, probably better to look at the 64 gigabyte version unless you're thinking of running memory card sticks, uh, micro SD, sorry, external hard drives, things like that, that you're gonna store all your movies on or games and things because you're just really gonna run into space issues there. Now you can probably disable hibernation and that would free up another couple of gigabytes. And I'll quickly just show you here that the, the system, that it is running Windows 10 Home and I haven't actually connected up to the internet but that will fully activate when I do here. So not too bad. Now the device manager, show you that very quickly. So under network adapters, we have the Realtek card that we see in literally every single tablet and mini PC out there. It's either the Realtek, this one here, or the Broadcom. And this is the disk drive here, so it's a Samsung BGN D3R, very quick. Intel HD graphics, of course, that's Gen 7 graphics. For executional cores is all it has with the bay trail and no cameras of course on board if you want to use a webcam you're going to have to just plug one in in Windows and then you can use that and just quickly show you here a few other things so under sensors that's just the uh, sensor for the orientation accelerometer there and there's our CPU of course Nothing else here I can really show you. Bluetooth on board, of course. Batteries, there is none. And the audio is handled by Intel. So it's not a Realtek audio chipset. Well, it might actually be Realtek, but that's how it's installed there. And the start button, of course, works. Now, we don't have Office installed, but I think it doesn't come free anymore with Windows. 10. It did with Windows 8.1 on the Pipo X8, but it doesn't now on Windows 10 there. So I'm just going to go and install quickly a few benchmarks and some games and proceed to show you. Okay, so I benchmark the USB 2 ports and the micro SD card slot. And these are the results I got here using Crystal Disk Mark here. So the micro SD card slot you can see maxes out at 23 megabytes per second. That is normal, I see that on most of the Bay Trail devices. And this here is the USB 2 
port speed running and external one terabyte Toshiba drive. It can power the drive without any problems there. And maximum speeds, 40 megabytes per second, maxing out USB 2 speeds there. Now we only have two gigabytes of memory on board, so I'm doing a bit of multitasking here and we can see that already I'm eating into 80% of the memory. So there's not a lot left there, but you can get away with running a few things at the same time. For example, here I'm just installing Dungeon Hunter 5 to test that out. I have Chrome open. Here are the wireless speeds here. Now my desktop PC can get 50 megabits per second on a good day and 25 upload. And it's got 41 and 20. Those results are really good. No problems there with the speed and that's probably due to that extra large antenna they're using. I have Steam open at the moment. Settings right here. I also just wanted to show you that the scaling is 150 that they have it set to for the tablet. You can of course put that down to 100% scaling when using this through a monitor or TV. So everything doesn't look so large like it does at the moment. You can set that just to be 100% of the native resolution there. So I also ran some benchmarks, 3D Mark 2006, as well as Geekbench 3 here. And these are the results here. This is Geekbench 3. Now the score is lower than what I got in Android. I don't know why, but I do have a feeling it might have been caused by the fact that Windows was running some updates in the background there that caused that to slow down a little. This here is the 3D Mark 2006 score for those interested. I'm just going to test out a few games here. I'm just going to run a store game, and that is Dungeon Hunter Sir, 5 here. This is no time to show off. Just watch and learn. So I'm controlling this here with an Xbox 360 controller, which works just fine. You just plug it in and it works. Of here. For some reason, it's not scaling up to the display correctly here. It's to do with the Intel graphics drivers and the settings there. It's a little bit laggy there. Look at that frame rate there. It's displayed up in the top left hand corner. We will show you the settings as soon as I die, which will not be long. The teammate there is stabbing me. Flying flashbang. Grenade out. Yeah, I'm gonna get you, bro. Hello. Throwing smoke. Mid, that's coming. Two. So these are the settings here that I am using. Let me just quickly show you. So it's uh, 720p. Everything else is on low here. I don't think there's any way you could probably run this any faster than that. Uh, yeah, so it's barely playable really with those frame rates. They are in the mid to low 20s. Move on now and have a look at another game. Now some Asphalt 8 Airborne here, using the Xbox 360 controller.
this is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 here. Seeing how this runs, it's uh, running on the lower settings, 720p here to show you the options. So, lower settings there. Wow, and dead really quick. So the temperatures after running those benchmarks and all those gaming tests, 78 degrees was the maximum temperature I've seen out of the whole two hours. And I did run 3D Mark, Geekbench, did some gaming as well. Windows gaming seemed to be a lot smoother than definitely running other games. For example, Counter-Strike there wasn't exactly the best frame rate and we do have that scaling issue. But those temperatures there, they don't actually seem to be any better than the Peepo X8. I'm pretty sure I got around that kind of figure there. 76 or 78 degrees so not really getting any better there you could probably improve things if you were a bit of a modder you could open the back of the the x9 up pull that off and change the thermal pads on there and perhaps even add a bit of copper there to help lower temperatures if you're really that way inclined you could probably do that so I'll just quickly now show you edge here and run tech tablets Dot com here and see how fast that loads. I did test this out in Android and it should definitely be a little bit smoother here running in Edge. So if I just full screen that up and scrolling here, it seems reasonably smooth there in Edge. And if I use my finger here on the screen, that is even smoother. So overall pretty fast there. And you can run various tabs here if you wanted to. You could simply just keep opening things up. And you're limited just really by the amount of RAM on board, which is only 2 gigabytes, as mentioned just earlier. So once you start to open up quite a few browser tabs here, just going to go along and open some things up here and see how long it takes to get it to slow down a little bit. And if I'll run Task Manager here, and check out our available RAM, which will no doubt start to fill up. Now the CPU is actually maxing out there almost. So it is actually look 100% now loading everything up. Switching between those tabs seems relatively quick. And it's starting to slow down there a little. And I'm noticing that, yeah, those images took a little while to load in. So you can do uh, some amount of multitasking here. I just need to see if I launch Paint. Okay, so I can have Paint here open. And to try and even do the Windows split screen thing here, select and run Netflix here. Take a print screen of that. Dump that over to Paint. Of course, Paint is really not a taxing uh, application there. If you ran something like Photoshop, then it's going to be way more demanding on the system there. And let's see if I can draw on that. Okay. And things will probably come grinding to a halt when I start to open up store here and even Chrome. Chrome here. So we are really starting to reach the limits of what the Intel quad core Atom can do here. And things like Office, you should be able to still run that at the same time. So my memory now is almost completely full. The CPU is maxing out there still. But it isn't actually doing too bad, considering. And uh, maybe I could just even go a little bit further here and try and open up some streaming YouTube here. and see if it's capable to actually load a movie up, but it is definitely starting to crawl a bit now. Uh, 
and I can't seem to type in here now. It's completely lagged out. There we go. It's finally coming up. 1080p video sample. 1080p video. There we go. Load this in and see if it can handle that. Just any movie here will do. This is an entry level DSLR, the Canon Rebel T4i. And this Change is settings. It's only running in 360. Video recording. So I can even run that at 4K, I and mean, that's going to definitely kill it. So that's in full HD now, and my mouse pointer is starting to lag. Video recording capability. I've just finished benchmarking with two. 3D Mark 2006 there, just wanted to see just how hot it's getting up to. So around 38, 39, almost 40 degrees to the back of the Peepo X9 here. And to touch it, I can say that yes, it's getting warm there, but it's not going to burn you or anything. So the, the thermals aren't too bad. Maybe there is a bit of an improvement there uh, compared to the X8, the earlier model, which of course was a little bit smaller. Overall, I think this is an excellent hybrid mini PC, especially for the price. This was 126 at the time of this review from GearBest.com where I got this tablet, and they do have it in stock too. But I would recommend going with the 64 gigabyte model there, because as you've seen in this video, that the storage is quite limited in Android there, and in Windows, really, you still don't have enough. Once Windows 10 matures with a lot more updates, it's going to start to cut into that free space there which in the long run is probably going to be a bit of an issue, which is why I always recommend if you're going to get a dual boot system, try and get the 64 gigabyte model. Overall, the only cons really is the uh, design's not going to be for everyone, of course. Not everyone wants a, a hybrid mini PC and tablet all in one. And the left and right speakers here, they tend to put out a bit of static and noise, but only in Android, oddly enough, which is quite strange. Other than that, a very decent device there. It's got a blazing fast eMMC 4.51 spec eMMC. That is really good. The speeds on it, nice 4K speeds there too, and the sequential read and write there. So overall, I can definitely recommend this, especially for the price. I mean, I just think it's quite a bargain there for what you're getting. Two operating systems and a nice sharp screen with that new higher resolution of 1920 by 1200. And it's quite bright, bright there and sharp. So all in all, definitely can recommend this. Thanks for watching the video and good on you for making it this far. Bye for now and do keep an eye out on the channel if you are interested in seeing more reviews like this of various mini PCs and tablets coming out of China.